Hi everyone, I'm Painter Master Elite Karen Boniker and I'd like to introduce you to a new brush category called Suminagashi Ink. I think you'll really enjoy working with these brushes. They create a very traditional uh, Suminagashi pour, pouring experience. Although it's digital, it's a lot of fun to work with. Let's take a look at the new brushes. The first brush is called Enzo. Use this brush at different brush sizes and be sure to use it on a layer that has existing pixels on it. So this would mean that you could work um, on the canvas layer or a new layer, but make sure that there's some kind of color or pixels on the layer. So I'm going to actually bring the size of the brush up so you can see this very clearly and it creates the Enzo circle effect and add some real interesting texture to your piece. The next brush is called Form, and this is actually my favorite brush in the brush category. I love the way that it moves the pixels and creates these really interesting shapes and forms. Um, I like to use it again on existing pixels and going into certain parts of the painting where I can use it either at a small size or quite large to create these really interesting shapes. And this is more of a small size brush shape here. And you can see that you can also pick different colors and apply that into the effect. So a lot of fun to work with. One of my favorites, Form. Indigo Lake is the next brush. And this brush will take existing pixels and move them as if you're um, actually taking a stick and moving the paint around on a suminagashi pour. So a very beautiful brush to work with as well. And use it with pressure settings. Soft pressure, you're going to get a relatively soft flow and firmer pressure. You can see how it moves the pixels around a little bit further. The next brush is marbling. And this brush is also one of my favorites. I like to use it at different brush sizes because it'll give you different effects as you go into certain parts of the painting to uh, disturb the pixels. So again, color. And I'll just kind of pull these pixels around. And soft pressure, very, very velvety smooth flow and firmer pressure, you'll get a little different look to it, a little uh, more exaggerated. Uh, Blooming Pour is a brush, again, use it either large or small, and it creates these really interesting bloom effects uh, in your existing pixels, especially if you're looking for some interesting texture to apply. This is Gauzy Crease, and this one is a crease brush, but it also uh, applies a real interesting texture. Again, you can use it quite large, and you can see the gauzy effect that it creates, and the texture effect. And you can use it up and down motion, or kind of sideways, to create more of a creasing effect. gauzy crease. The next brush is Marbling Mix and this is a mixing brush although it has some texture to it as well that gauzy effect as well. So you use this brush small or large but you'll also want to uh, notice that how it creates a twirling effect as it moves the pixels around. I love landscape painting and I've been known to use these brushes <laughs> for my landscape paintings as well to create clouds, uh, waves, so lots, always lots of uses beyond the traditional. So the combination here between soft and hard edges is what you're looking for. Uh, Tender Marbling is a marbling brush. And again, firm pressure, and you're going to get lots of that traditional marbling effect 
as you can see here. And soft pressure, just a very, very soft and tender type of uh, mixing. One of my favorites as well. Texture blending is a blending brush um, that you can use on edges or to add a little extra texture. I like using it really big because it creates some fun and interesting texture to apply. And then smaller, you can soften those edges where you just want uh, less texture to appear. So the combination between the two is a nice effect. The next brush is Velvet Blending, and this one is a very soft marbling brush. Uh, creates a very soft blending effect of the paint. And I'm going to go ahead and drop this layer. And that's Velvet Blend. The next brush is Velvet Pour, and this is one of my favorites as well. Um, a beautiful combination of color. I can get a beautiful flow going with these, with the velvet pour. The next brush we'll take a look at is called the wet pour. And this brush is a watercolor, but, uh, a digital watercolor brush. And you can use it um, with different colors. I like using it with black to give that very traditional uh, effect of paint dropping on the layer. And use it at different pressures as well. Soft pressure, you'll get a very, very small splattering of ink. And firm pressure, you'll get these nice big blocks of ink coming in. That's wet pour, another one of my favorites. The next brush is Zen Pour. And uh, this one you can use with different colors. And again, it's a beautiful brush for mixing pixels and creating that traditional ink pour. The last brush is Marbling Pour. And this brush, again, I like using it quite large. Um, it's a brush that you'll want to start off with to create the initial effect of your pour. So um, it's a, it has a beautiful kind of transparency to it that I just love as well. And you can use it with hard or soft pressure. It creates very soft edges. So you can pull some of those edges out. And firm pressure, uh, you can see where you get stronger edges. And this is firm pressure applied via your stylus. Soft and you get that nice sumanagashi type pour effect. So these are the new sumanagashi ink brushes for painter and I hope you enjoy them. Take care.